I don't see why not. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of talent in this league. Um, but we'll have to see. I mean, free agency is currently officially underway. So we'll have, I'm sure by the time next week we're here, we'll probably have something to talk Definitely. about. Um, as we move into our Sounders here, who last week, a little quiet, right? But this week, quite busy. <laughs> as we head over to the Sounders news, the Sounders added four key players uh, new to the roster here. Um, we will go through order of how they were added, but four new key players. Uh, the MLS Super Draft took place last week. The Sounders initially had the 20th overall pick, but would on, on the actual pick timer would trade out to the New York Red Bulls for the 43rd overall pick and $75,000 in allocation money. With that 43rd overall pick, Seattle would select UW defender uh, Akil Robin. Robin is a uh, defender center back out of France, previously playing three seasons with Bowling Green until tra uh, transferring into UW. Um, with the 70 76th overall, pardon me, pick, uh, the Sounders would se select Seattle U midfielder Hal Uteritz. So you kind of notice there. UW player, Seattle U player. The last time the Sounders did that, it was the Roldan brothers and Christian Roldan out of UW and Alex Roldan out of Seattle U. Um, so keeping it local, also keeping with the local flavor here, the Sounders would sign UW midfielder Dylan Tevez to a homegrown player contract. That is a big deal, not only because Tevez played for the Sounders, you know, as a youth, uh, a youth player earlier on, uh, he was offered a chance to play for the Sounders instead of going to college, but he went to UW instead. A uh, local kid out of, well, not local kid, but coming out <laughs> of Hawaii. Uh, Tevez was ranked the number two overall player in the country in men's soccer last season. So you add instant talent right there in your own backyard. Why not, right? Uh, signs a four-year deal, includes three option years, Decided to wear the number 99 because it reminds him of his number nine that he wore in college. 99 just, when it's not football, it feels really weird to me. <laughs> because baseball, I know Manny Ramirez wore it with the Dodgers, but just a big number. It is, right? yeah. Um, he has completed his degree in finance from the UW Foster School of Business already, uh, obtaining his degree two, year, two quarters early. Um, so he doesn't have to worry about any more college stuff. I still have to do that. Um, <laughs> but you, that's it. I feel like that's, you know, you talk about the Sounders, you talk about going to the playoffs every year. Uh, they don't do it by just getting instant fixes. I mean, Tevez may make an impact this year, as we saw the Sounders deal with some injuries last season and some international call-ups. So we more than likely will see him on the pitch at some point this season. Uh, but this is only a guy who's going to get better, I feel like. Right. Um, and then the fourth, the big name, the biggest name that we've been talking to you about for, what, the week, past two weeks, the Sounders officially signed Albert Rusnak uh, to a two-year deal with a third option on the 13th of January. Seattle made the news official. Uh, last year, 11 goals, 11 assists in the regular season. Uh, Real Salt Lake, Rusnak's former team, reportedly did not offer him a new contract, which is interesting considering had such a well-balanced season. Um, so just, just looking at that, before we even get into the players that we're retaining, out of the guys you've got on contract, you keep most of your core, right? But to add, at least if we're not going to look at the draft, because those guys are relatively unknown, the draft doesn't always mean the most in MLS. Yeah. You sign a guy who scores 11 goals and assists on 11 of them, and you add the number two player in the country. I mean... As somebody, you know, as someone from, you know, living here, I mean, what do you think about that? Because you've, you've got your uh, knowledge in basketball and football, but if you were to take that, you think about, you know, a team that, like the Patriots, were to add the number two player in college right. and sign a key free agent. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I was completely surprised when you said that he wasn't offered a new contract because I'm reading that this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, signing in the MLS. Um he makes he's going to be a key contribution um do you think there will be much adjusting to him joining the sounders not hmm. maybe on a chemistry point just because you know you're coming into a team that knows each other well right this is a sounders group that the core has been around for a while christian roldan's been around for a while 
Stefan Fry has been around for a while. So a lot of guys that already know each other. So maybe on that point, going to know each other. Sure. But in terms of play style, I would say no, just because Nico Ladero, a guy who's been so valuable to this team last year dealing with injury, really couldn't get his feet under him. Uh, they play a very similar style. So I think, you know, on that aspect, no. But obviously, you know, new guy, new team. Different chemistry. Yeah. That'll be there and that'll be there to work on. You know, I know that they had their first official preseason training on Friday. So you got some time to build on it, right? Um, but you've got, what, a two-year deal with a third-year option. I think it's only good, yeah, because like you talk about it, this is one of the bigger free agency signings in the MLS, a guy who's all-star all -star caliber um, coming to Seattle, who Seattle's been relatively a juggernaut, you know. Um, and so with that news, you know, about those four being added to the team, we have some players coming back. Alex Roldan uh, officially coming back on a three-year contract that's fully guaranteed. Uh, Stefan Cleveland, the backup goalkeeper, has re-signed a guy who had to start several games with Stefan Fry out due to injury. So a guy who's got, who's young, may one day usurp Stefan Fry. Um, has got talent, has, has got uh, experience under his belt. My apologies. Um, and then everybody else, we've we've got some other players who are not official. Official. Will Bruin working on a contract with him, but it sounds like he'll be good. I've got sources uh, on Montero and Rowe that they're, you know, basically they're already at training on Friday. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like deals might be done already and haven't been officially announced yet and or um, they're working on them. And then two of the bigger pieces, Rowe Ruiz Diaz, who you just saw on your screen, you know, guy who uh, was near the top of the MLS and goal scored, led the Sounders and goal scored as your all-time postseason goal scorer for this team. Uh, talk about him has been kind of rampant over the offseason, whether or not he'll be back. Maybe he's done with Seattle. Uh, reportedly, close on an extension. We may hear about that next week officially. And then Jao Paulo, you know, guy who was a finalist for the MVP award in the league last season. Uh, he is also close on an extension, but I have been told that that is a deal that is good as done. Uh, so you get, think about though, like we just talked about with adding Rusnak, um, you retain, out of the 18 players that you saw the most last year, you retain 16 of them, and then you add an all-star caliber in Rusnak, and you add the number two player in college. It, it's got to just look like a return to, you know, getting to MLS Cup, right? Because two years ago, uh, in the COVID season, Seattle goes and plays Columbus Crew, loses that game, unfortunately. Uh, last season, bounced in the first round. So you got to think we might see a return to grace, no? Oh yeah, I was gonna ask that if it's too early to be thinking about some title dreams here. Title dreams, <laughs> no. I mean, cause this is, again, we, we're, we're in a really lucky position here with the Sounders, not only the Sounders, but with other soccer as well. Um, they've made the playoffs every year in their MLS inception. I say that because the Sounders did exist before the MLS. Um, <laughs> making the playoffs every year, having a culture that people want to be a part of. Rusnak's old coach, uh, head coach at Real Salt Lake, left Real Salt Lake in the middle of the season to join the Sounders as an assistant coach. Yes. So what does that tell you, right? And then Rusnak said, me and my family, the best decision was to be in Seattle. So it, it just, you know, if you look at successful franchises, a good front office is always at the base of that. You know, it doesn't matter if we're just talking about soccer. It goes to the other sports as well. Um, and that's what the Sounders have. Uh, so is it too early to think about playoff, uh, you know, title title aspirations? I don't think it is because, you know, Seattle, two MLS Cup titles, you know, just a few years ago in 19 or so, you win it, your, your title in your own building. And you, the next year you go uh, to the championship, you lose it. But to be in the mix all the time, I don't think there's going to be anything different related to that. Um, just a smaller piece of news, the Sounders treated Jake Morris, don't worry, not Jordan Morris, I know <laughs> Jay Morris, relatively similar. Jake Morris, the center back, was traded to Columbus, just got done talking about, uh, for $50,000 in general allocation money. So not the biggest deal as Morris spent a lot of time with the Tacoma Defiance, um, but still of note, I would say, you know, allocation money can be used for a number of things. Uh, so something to note there. 
Uh, for the Sounders, looking ahead, we've still got some offseason, but mostly it's we're getting into preseason training. Their next game is not until February 17th. So we'll keep you updated as that goes. And uh, I am.